It's a water, water gouged. Either done many, many years ago, and then the boulder rolled over, or it was carved in place. It was carved in place. That well, definitely is a mathematics problem, a physics problem. This is the cave boulder right here. Part of the cluster of bark boulders here at Dartmouth Rapids, which have really unique weather carved, river carved. Ugh. Potholes, cave, and the collapsed pothole. It's kind of a curly Q or G shaped collapsed pothole. Here's a Here's a pothole right down here. We'll pop down here in a second. Look at that one. It's the Dartmouth Rapids. Beautiful features to these boulders here. It took me years to notice all these features here. Finally here. It's taking me close to two hours to hike here today. I believe I'm standing in a pothole right here. This is one of the fantastic pothole boulders itself. There's a, this is a massive pothole that I'm sitting in. It's full of mud. And this would be kind of uh, proof of how these takes however many long years to get carved by the river. There's another oblong pothole there, and then there's another pothole right over there. Yeah, there's the other irregular pothole right down there. Pothole here, and the one we just were stepping in. All these beautiful, certain perfect consistency of boulders get all smoothed out by the river when the river's higher. Got all these beautiful carving actions in them. Okay, we'll take a quick peek at the uh, cave boulder. So the cave boulder is just a hair tad upstream of the first beautiful oblong potholes boulder. We're gonna take a look in at the cave boulder here. Caves on the uh, uphill side of the boulder. You definitely could shelter in there most of the year because the river doesn't get up high enough to cause you cause you to get wet back here. It's a nice little secluded little boulder. Might even have some graffiti here. Uh, all right, the cave boulder. You could sleep two or three people in there. Easy. Dartmouth Rapids on the Ferncliff side. This is where you'll find the cave boulder. And that was it. This is it. I believe we have to go this way. It's easier. Probably 99% of the people in the park never even know about the cave boulder or the potholes boulder. These last couple trees here, past the, uh, or before we get to the bent tree, we're hiking uphill on the Ferncliff side of the Yakigani River, Ferncliff Trail side. And here we are at these great molded boulders here. Look at this one. This is just the water's been cutting through here for who knows how many thousands and thousands of years.
Just cut right through this boulder. Bam. There's a pothole of sorts. It's carved out by the river. Most likely. I don't think this was glacier carved. I don't know. Finally, we've reached the spectacular Dartmouth Rapids boulder field on the Ferncliff side. It's not that easily reached. Beautiful big boulders all carved by the river when the river's higher. We just passed the cave boulder and we're still hiking upstream. We're gonna see the next two most spectacular. One I call the ear boulder, and that was really the easiest one to remember. The ear boulder, because it's a boulder with an ear. And the river carved the ear. And... Uh, here's the big... I call it the bent tree, it's just a leaning pine. Hasn't fallen over, might still be partially alive. Oof. So downriver of that big slanted tree will be the cave boulder and the first really beautiful pothole boulder. And then upriver of the bent tree, I believe, just a few 30, 40 feet will be the ear boulder. And another pothole, regular pothole, what you normally think of as a pothole. And then there will be the G or curly Q boulder, which is a pothole which was collapsed by the eventual erosion of the river that collapsed one side of it, making it in, into a G. It looks like a G carved into the top of this nice big round boulder, which is right over there. Oh no, here's the G boulder right here. What am I saying? Right on top of the G boulder. So just below, Just below the big slanted tree is the G boulder. And we're gonna go over to it, it right now. Because I remember that the G boulder has its own little young tree next to it. And I saw the young tree and it's right here. So that means that the G boulder is right here as well. These are all super slippery today. So. Getting to the G boulder is kind of tricky. I slide in between boulders here. young tree right here. I'm not sure what kind that is. This is the G boulder right here. See that pothole is collapsed on this side. And when the river's higher, when you stand right here, you can really see that the G boulder has an effect on the uh, river it causes like a whirlpool to cause out there because the water whirlpools right in here right in there Ooh. anyways I think this is either my number one boulder in the park 
because you never see a boulder that gets carved out on the inside like this one and find it in this stage and I wonder how many hundreds or decades or thousands of years it'll be before it falls completely apart and chips to pieces and falls into the river like these other bits that are in the river across the river that big bent or that down tree over there and all that scraggly debris over there on that side is the Dartmouth Rapids Great Gorge Trail pothole I've done 30 40 videos that's the pothole that started me being interested in all the erosion of uh, the great river boulders all up and down the river here my goodness look at that one that boulder's got to be the one of the biggest in the park along the river shore all right so this is the curly q or the g boulder i've taken many videos standing up here it's a slippery late october day i'm not climbing up there today 